either two more curd apes or a tarmogoyf. Hopefully it's not a gadok tig. That seems like a very slow start for yeah, a Yeah, that doesn't seem like the best start for the zoo, the zoo deck. So Grim Lava Mancer. Lava Mancer. And, Is that uh, worth a counterspell? I don't know. I wonder if Sam has uh, one of his mental missteps in hand. He no, plays he a full a four copies. Oh, so he's thinking about forcing it? Yeah. Okay. And he does go ahead and force it. Now, this force is interesting. Force Samuel down to, eight, to 17. Yep. Sam will drop a 17 as a result of that force of will. And uh, that can also uh, tell Pat something about Sam's hand. If Sam's willing to force a will a Grim Lava Mancer, then it means that he probably has at least a Vendillion click in his hand. And perhaps more than one copy of it. Well, and Grim Lava Mancer or Goy, because Grim Lava Mancer really hurts Goy. So, I mean, probably Pat's not thinking about that, but that's what Samuel was. Like, he doesn't want his Goy to probably get eaten. Yeah. I mean, he, the ability to shrink it down to a 2-3 uh, and then kill it off with a Kurt 8 mm -hmm. trading just seems seems really difficult for him to get a Tarmogoyf online. So do you think he's going to daze here? Yes. yes. He's going to daze. So he dazes away that uh, second Kurt 8. And uh, Samuel Swisher is... Uh, you know, on no lands, but I certainly like his odds this game, regardless. Yeah. He just drew a mental misstep. A very good card in this matchup. Pat's deck is, uh, <laughs> has at least 21 drops. Yeah. Let me count Way how many more. it actually is. Yes, more than 20. It's 19 plus 12, so... Yeah. More than 31 drops. All right, brainstorm from Samuel at end of turn. Uh, he's sitting at 14 life. Yeah, and uh, he's going to put two cards back. What? Now, oh, Pat wow. Even have no, a wow. Screen. Does Pat has puppies on his shirt? Does he actually have puppies on his shirt? He has three puppies on his shirt, I think. Oh, man. <laughs> How serendipitous. <laughs> All right. Pat gets in for another two. He is drawing a lot of lands this game. Yeah, and that's not what you want to do with the Sioux deck, especially when you're playing this many one drops. <laughs> Alright, so I think we might see a Goyf hit the board. Especially since Mental Misstep is going to be able to protect it. Oh no, I thought he had a Goyf. I think he still does. Oh, he's just going to Diabolic Edict. All right, Grim Lava Mancer is going to get misstepped. Yep. Sam's going to go down to 10 here, pop that fetch land, uh, grab a tropical island, and then tap it for a mental misstep. So, mental misstep's going to counter that Grim Lava Mancer, and then Sam is probably going to slam a Tarmogoy next turn. Yeah, and that's going to be really good. Yeah. Mental misstep's going to get in for one. Oh, never mind. <laughs> And he just drew a deed. Pretty good card here. Uh, Pat Sec has enough one drops where uh, Sam can potentially blow up multiple creatures, leaving us Tarmogoyf on scathe. Tarmogoyf is right now a 3 4. There's instant creatures and lands in the graveyards. Uh, Pat, Pat cracks two fetch lands. He wants to minimize the chances of drawing lands in the next turn. Um, in you most know, decks, thinning doesn't really make much sense, but in Zoo with only 20 lands... Like, and when you're not playing Step Links, yeah, yeah. it definitely makes sense. Um, yeah, I've actually heard a lot of players say things like, oh, well, if I've drawn two lands in a row, then I don't want to crack a fetch land because I'm less likely to draw a third land in a row than I am to draw a land off a random pile, and that actually makes no sense. So remember that your deck is absolute random and that each draw step you have resets... <laughs> the odds. <laughs> I don't know. It makes sense to me. If you've already drawn two, what's if the deck was completely randomized, what are you to drawing another land? Just as random as they shuffling it up again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's absolutely like it's. It's absolute random. I it think you'll. I think you'll draw a spell. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just draw whatever I need at the time, so... It's pretty good. Yeah. That sounds way better. Yeah. All right, so... 
Patsy's a podder. And uh, Pat's, Pat's plan right now has to just be to dome. Yeah, he's just going to aim response to Ponder with as much burn as possible. Lightning Bolt resolves. Lightning Bolt resolves. Does he it's just have enough burn? Four. I mean, do you, do you really want to do double lightning bolt in response to a ponder? Now it tells him what your game plan's on. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, now I, he knows I'm, what to ponder for. I'm, I'm very curious. Like, maybe he's going to ponder wrong because that, sure, like, if he knows to go find counter spells, he's still going to counter a removal spell now. Like, if he finds a counter spell, he's going to get one of your burn spells, right? Yeah. You bet anyway? But now you're just telling him what you need. Maybe he won't get those. Yeah, so, I mean, there's still plenty of burn left in uh, Pat's yeah. deck here. But that, that line of play doesn't make much sense to me. Maybe it's correct. If your opponent just knows to get burned, but now what about his next burn spell? Unless he's going to, like, try to... Unless he has, like, double Helix in hand, and he just wants to play around um, Mental Misstep. Yeah, if he has double Helix in hand, then it makes sense. All right, upkeep after draw and dealing click. So Pat has to respond with a Helix to Dome here. If he has Helix. I think he does. I, he must to have made the play yeah. that he made last turn. All right. Helix to Dome. Sam goes down to just one life. Mm-hmm. And Pat's the Tarmogoy. Oh, he has no basics? Yeah, no basics. Yeah. Uh, the judge is saying you have to shuffle, but no, you don't. You can choose to use ability or not. You don't have to. Yeah. When you path, it'll say... It's a May. I love the interactions when you path people, but they know what cards. There's a card on top of their library, and they just decide not to get a land to get that. So the yeah. times you play, you play path to when you know they're not going to get any value. So Sam's at one here. Pat plays his land and passes. All right, it's a race, and he just drew Tarmogoy. I mean, he knew it was there. Yeah. Puts Pat down to nine. And uh, is there enough in the graveyard to kill Pat next turn? No, there isn't. It's four. It's eight. it's 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 seven damage total. So Pat okay. goes to eight, and he's got. So he's got. Wait, he has a deed. Does steps. he still have a deed in hand? Yes. Then that is lethal. Uh, so because Pat sacrificed that fetch land, yeah. he gets one less draw step. Yeah. And the odds of drawing a burn spell with one less land in your deck are not greater than they would be if you just draw two yeah. cards. But he doesn't know that he has that. Yeah, that's true. Alright, so he doesn't have the deed. Uh, I'm pretty sure he has a deed in his hand. Well, he goes to one. Well, to then. One. If he does, then he's screwed up. Yeah. Or we don't have right life totals. Da -da -da -da. And he does have the deed! I saw it! Uh, what, is that a goblin guide? Yeah, that's a goblin guide. And that's a pernicious deed. Yeah. Or is Patcox actually at four right now? Was he at four or one? I'm pretty sure he was at one. We thought he was at one. Um, well, if, if, Pat, if, one, if Pat was Sam at one, there was Samuel Punt and, and the way we I mean, saw I the game. Him being at one. Oh, he helixed. He was at four. Oh, we were yeah, wrong. We were wrong. Sorry, guys. Not cool. Not cool at all of us. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, Sam's been playing this deck literally forever. I don't think he would mix that up. That, so. yeah. <laughs>
I mean, people miss things all the time. That's true. I missed the draft open just this morning. Uh, <laughs> all right. Now, uh, looking at these sideboards, what do we think uh, Sam's going to bring in here? He's probably going to bring in a pair of ghastly demise and uh, two perish. Do you think he brings in the extra deeds? Yeah, of course. Okay, I was wondering if those were more for artifact-based combo decks, and because it's hard to f shave off that much from this list. Really? Um, I think so. I mean, especially when you're on the play, you want your stifles, right? And Sue? Maybe. Yeah, with like 12 sack lines, sure. Yeah. I don't know. And I mean, him's like the stones against them. I guess you cut Force of Will. Force of Will's not too good here. The new link seems really weak. Um, it costs a lot of mana to make a trade. Yeah, that's true. And all these cards are different, but they're all the same. Yeah. And then Fat Cox probably brings in Ranger of Eos. I don't know. Um, in this matchup, yeah, I guess you just bring in a Ranger. No, because Stifle, like an... Wasteland, and him probably make that bad. Yeah, I mean, he brings in a play set of Rebs for sure. Oh, Red Elemental Loss in this matchup. Yeah. Just to hit Counter Magic. Yeah, you hit Counter Magic. You hit like V Clicks. Like, it's even good to hit Brainstorms and stuff. Like, you can hit like. What do you cut then? I think you just. Oh, well, Gaddock Teague like comes out. Yeah, Gaddock Teague's pretty bad, and then you can probably cut some, like, Loam Lines or Curd Apes, right? Do you really want to cut your creatures? I don't know. I mean, he's probably cutting his V-Clicks, so you can probably take Blob Masters out. Ooh, one card that seems insane is Elspeth, if it ever hits the board. Yeah. I bet Elspeth comes in. Elspeth seems ridiculous in this matchup. Elspeth is really good. I think Elspeth is going to be, like, the best Planeswalker in Modern. Yeah, Elspeth's insane. I don't even think it's remotely close. Even. No. Yeah. Elspeth was my favorite Planeswalker before it rotated and Giddy became my favorite Planeswalker. The thing is, outside of a Johnny's, the white Planeswalkers have been unreal good. Well, Johnny Vengeance is pretty unreal good. Yeah, that's true. Johnny Vengeance was good. And even a Johnny's fine if that deck was fine. Yeah. I mean, if that deck had what it needed. Mm -hmm. and I it's mean, still I, a really good planeswalker on its yeah, own. Yeah, I, I included uh, like if you ever played it in limited, you know how its power level actually yeah. is. It's just ridiculous. Red's the weak one. Red has just had very bad. Yeah, Red has had terrible planeswalkers. I mean, Koth's fine, sure, but it's still not that insane. Like it, it I mean, I'm pretty sure Koth is just insane. It can't protect itself. It takes a lot of time. I don't know. Koth is fine. I think New Chandra's actually pretty good too. New Chandra. I don't think it's that good. It just seems weak. Like, compared to what's happening in the format, it doesn't seem that good. Like, That's you fair. center her around a bunch of titans. And, and like, creatures that, like, Squadron Hawk. Like, Squadron Hawk makes that card bad, because Squadron Hawk makes so many, like, X1s unplayable. Like, Elite Vanguard would be a playable card if it wasn't for Squadron Hawk. You know, S Signal Pest is in the Timber Steel deck, but Timber Steel is being held back by Squadron Ox. So it's weird how a 1 1 for 2 mana is keeping a Planeswalker that can ping 1 1s, you yeah. know, back. At bay. I'm going to try to break Chandra the Firebrand. All right, you go you for it. You wait and see. That'll be a lot of wasted time, my friend. <laughs> All right, turn one, Polluted Delta gets cracked to counter a Goblin Guide. Yep, and Sam's going to fall to 19 here. He's going to search up an Underground Sea, and then he's going to Mental Misstep. Are you a Psychic? Yeah. Sweet. I've just seen a million Team America games. Oh, okay. <laughs> Who knows, maybe old days, I don't know. No. Nope. Mental nope. misstep. Pat Cox is going to say go. Got there, got that, figured that nice. one out. Well done. Wasteland takes out the Taiga. Yeah, and that seems pretty good, especially if he's got a... Uh, I, I can't tell the difference. 
Sam has uh, Force Force in hand, so whatever Pat, Cox whatever Pat Cox plays this turn, Sam can force a will if he needs to. Here, Mesa. Oh, he brought the Stone Forge in. Oh, that's so sad. He's got one Stone Forge in his deck. It was the bottom of his library. So sad. Very sad. It saddens me that I'll never get to play with Stone Forge ever again unless I'm playing Legacy. Yeah, I, I mean, you're it. probably going to play it when you play yeah, Legacy, right? Like, it's so good. Another Goblin Guide. And uh, that's going to get in. Perhaps give Sam an extra land. No. I like Sam's going to Gaslightimize it. No. no. I, I really like how he played his Goblin Guide. He put it behind his land, it resolves, and it jumps over the land to attack him. Yeah. <laughs> Like super haste. All right, brainstorm from Samuel. I bet he's trying. He needs some lands. I'm guessing. Yeah. Uh, well, no, he has have, lands. He why, has lands. He, why would he play it on turn two then? I don't know. Like, couldn't he have brainstormed at end of turn? Unless he was trying to find something, right? It's the only time he. Yeah, brainstormed. I mean, he he probably wanted something else on his turn. Like, you never know if he like brain like he had a couple cards in his hand that he didn't want in his hand. So maybe he was just trying to like brainstorm into a ponder and then he can put two cards on top and then shuffle his library and get a ponder. Off. Oh, something like that. Maybe. I don't know. He only has a ponder in his deck. I don't know if that was the card. Unless he knows his deck that well that that's the correct play to make when you have one ponder in your deck. Oh, yeah. No, I guess you're right. I mean, it has to be right. I'm... I'm not going to argue, if you know Samuel Swisher and you say he's been playing the deck for a long time, that had to have been the correct play, I just don't understand it. Yeah. Alright, draws his second guess in demise. Has a Tarmogoyf. Yeah, being at 17 in this spot is pretty insane. Yeah. Dealing with your opponent's first three creatures very easily without them dealing any damage. It's pretty rough for Pat at this point. I mean, the truth is, Pat could just draw a Stoneforge Mystic. Or his own time away. Yeah. Oh, but Gas City might as well kill that. I mean, Path to Exile also Elspeth deals with might be pretty good. <laughs> Path to Exile seems insane when your opponent doesn't have any basics. Yeah. It's really, really, really good. It was like uh, old Extended when you would Path Affinities, guys. I, I... The best. Most most affinity has started adapting to one island. <laughs> yeah. After a little while. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, yeah. So the first goblin guide got mental missed up. The second goblin guide got gas wise. And then Samuel ended up forcibling the third creature, Pat Cox's Lava Mancer. Pat the Exile deals with Samuel's first creature, and we just have a bunch of lands. So much action, and everyone always has the answers to deal with things. Yeah. It's pretty funny, actually. Um, this is a spot where Pat Cox would be pretty happy about getting like a ranger. <laughs> yeah, or Elspeth. Elspeth, yeah, Elspeth would just be the uh... game over. Yeah. Sammy would have a zero percent chance to win this game. <laughs> you could like play a Tombstalker. I'm kidding. Pat yeah. Just have nothing. Yeah. Oh, the wildest of Nacatles, which is Pat Cox's Twitter name. Is it? Yeah, his Twitter is Wildest Nick Cattle. I like it. Yeah. All right, Turok. He has three lands. I saw a Helix. Yeah, I saw a Helix too. Just gonna Helix. 14 to 20. Oh, and he does have an extra burn spell to m get gain value. Oh, he only had one white source for a double helix. Oh, he missed tapped his mana. Oh, he did. Wow, that's bad. Yeah. I bet he's steaming. He cannot play perfect under the camera. Yeah. <laughs> Every creature is just being destroyed. It doesn't even look like Sammy has that much removal. I know the counters are working as well, but... Him is very good against Zeus style yeah. decks. Especially when you're on the draw. Force Royal takes care of the Kurt 8. And Samuel is in top deck mode. A 
that's a pernicious deed. See, I wouldn't waste land there. I would wait for him yeah, to sack the land. Also, like Sam's deck is much more hungry. Yeah. Just... Brainstorm. Maybe he kept Jason. I think he probably boarded Jace out. Yeah, I'm sure he boards Jace out. And all his guesses are gone, so I guess Tomb Sucker and Graveyard is irrelevant. But Tarmogoyf as well. But with how big Pat's Graveyard is, I, I don't think I don't think second waste line is bad. He drew, I no think he has two bull, burn cells. Tarmogoyf off the top for Samuel. It's a pretty good one. Yeah. All right. A third <laughs> path to exile from Pat. An exciting match here. And this is fun. Ooh, he chains his opponent. Down to nine life. Yeah. All right. Loam Lion. Passes. And uh, him, like Sam's got another him. And I think Pat just has double lightning bolt. Puts him down to six. Puts him down to three. And he would be dead right now if Pat didn't tap incorrectly. Yeah. I bet he's got to be kicking himself right now. That's uh. Curdy. Sandra? V click. V click, alright. I think he drew V click. No, he didn't draw V click. Kyle Murphy, your draft is waiting for you. Uh oh. Kyle Murphy, I'm gonna tell my dad. Okay. There's <laughs> a Tarmacoy. Oh my god. Oh no! Brutal. Uh, well, you can't, that thought season's dead. Yeah. Uh oh. And that's game. That's it. Yeah, Sandler should get pinged by the Lava Mancer and die next turn. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so Pat Cox wins 2 0 against Samuel Swisher. Uh, he's, man, he's, 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 he's just He's steaming. so tilted yeah. about always I mean, under the camera. <laughs> for, for being on tilt, I mean, you gotta just thank your lucky stars that you keep just getting there anyway. You see Orrin Beasley in the background just shaking his head and laughing <laughs> at him. I think we have to make a list of the mistakes he's made under camera and just go through them with him later tonight when he holds up the other trophy. I'm not being biased, <laughs> I just, I like good stories. Oren and Pat are uh, good friends. They've been going to magic events together all year. Um, yeah. They have the same number of pro points.